Good day, dear great surgeons. Are we all together? So let's have our little rectal chapter. Full rectal chapter is a great chapter for non general surgeons. But it can be easy if you understand the idea behind the whole thing. So we have some diseases and some cancers, but it's all about the inner verge and the vents from the inner verge. And you have to be familiar with the anatomy of the whole full rectal muscles, arterial supply, sensation, as well as lymphatic drainage. So let's have a refreshment question with a very familiar disease. You all know the Crohn's disease, right? It's an inflammatory bowel disease. It's not a retable bowel disease. So it can come with multiple anal fistulas. Management is like no other fistula. And in the exam, he will give you a long question scenario like this. How would you manage this patient? In Crohn's disease, if you face this patient, you will pray from your heart that you don't touch this patient with any surgical intervention, by the way. So how would you manage this patient? In a patient with irreversible inflammatory bowel disease, the management of the fistula should be as much as possible with minimal surgical intervention. With complex procedures, this to be about in this patient, we will come to you with a very recurrent fistula. So, insertion of a loose sitrum will be the best choice for Crohn's disease not the cutting blocks. Here. So what is the fistula? You want to buy fistula. Fistula is connection between two tumors. Fistula is a connection tube between two surface areas of endothelium. It's not a sinus. A sinus is an opening in the surface that is connected to a bag inside. You have to be understanding what you are talking about. So what are the cetin sutures? The cetin sutures is a piece of material that pass through the fistula between the internal and the external opening that allows the drainage of the sepsis caused by this fistula. And this is important because the undrained septic cocci may drain along the path, leads to resistance, which may result in the development of accessory tracts and makes new fistulas and new openings. And their main stay is used is treating complex fistula. And by the way, now there are trials to try the laser therapy for fistulas, especially for the Crohn's patients, but the seton wires, the seton sutures are the mainstay until now for the fistulas. Clear? I hope it's clear. My sound is still not clear. Can you hear me? Sir, we can hear you, but there are some harsh noise in the background. The, the background noise is now clear? It's the same. Same? Okay. There is no difference until now, right? 
It's like a fan? Yes, sir. Like the, yes. Laptop. the laptop fan might be. How about now? Better? Yes, sir. It's a bit. Yes, yes. It's better. It's better. Okay. So, did you hear the previous uh, notes about the Seton sutures or not? Not clearly, sir. Wow. Is there still an echo for now? No, sir. It's clear now. So, wh uh, where did you hear? Where did you stop hearing? What is the last thing you heard? Or all didn't hear? Wow. It's a lot have been said. Simply Sorry, the... sir. No, no, no problem. So at least you have understood what is a fistula? Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Okay. And we clear that the Crohn's disease is not referable to do multiple operations? Yes. Yes. And the anal fistula is very common association with Crohn's disease? Yes. And the best thing to do for Crohn's with a fistula is to do a seton suture. Until here, we are clear. Suture, can you sure? Can you hear now or still nothing? Yes, sir. Your voice is absolutely clear now. Okay. So let's move for another question. It might be a tough question for the internet and making it not clear voice. In anal uh, fissure, what you do? You cut the internal sphincter or the external sphincter? In lateral sphincterotomy. External. Why you do cut the external, not the internal? Not sure, sir. Are you sure you cut the external? It's unlike the logic. You will cut the internal sphincter because the external sphincter is responsible for the continence. And I believe if the patient coming to you with a pain for defecation, you want to make sure that he gets out from your clinic continent at least. So if you cut the external sphincter, you made this patient incontinence <laughs> for his whole life. Okay, sir. So never do this again. Okay? Okay, sir. It's like you have cut his pudendal nerve. What is the innervation of the pudendal nerve? What is the root? Sacral two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep the poo of the flow. Right? <laughs> yes, two, sir. Three, four. So, with the sphincters, you have to see this image. Mm. A photo memory must be in your mind. So again, which muscle will you cut? The internal or the external sphincters? Internal sphincter. Great. To make sure this patient become continent after you make him relieved from the inner fissure. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if a lady came to you, asking you to manage her anal sphincter. What are the very first trial would you do for her? Anorectal manometry. Uh, okay, this is a measurement. I mean, what intervention? Would you do it surgically or medically or conservatively? I think conservative. Uh, application of the Delphia Zen cream. 
Exactly, Dr. Ibad, you are such a great surgeon. Yes, you will get there in the Why? Uh, the because it paralyzes. Exactly, because she is a lady and she will get pregnant and she don't have to go through many operations this early. Give her any surgical intervention after her marriage. Okay. And this is yes. actually the reason, yeah. by the way. So let's have a happy question. Or it's not happy after all. Everyone is answering. So. Diversion proctitis. So once the bowel has been discontinued and disconnected, a degree of inflammation is commonly seen in the bowel. So what is a diversion proctitis? It's a hard question. I want you to understand what we are saying. Diversion, proctitis, or divergent colitis is non-specific inflammatory disorders. It's non-inflammatory, non-specific inflammation, just this. This is the whole thing I want you to understand from this world. Don't do MD degree in this world very common to be seen after a disconnection. And what is the Hartman procedure will be? How would the Hartman procedure will be? The stoma at least. Tell me about the stoma of the Hartman. The colostomy, sir. That's and great. closure of the distal stump. We will have two eyes or one eyes. We, will, we have to make a stoma of the proximal part and close the distal part, suture the distal part. Only one eye. That's a great, it will be one eye. We have now a prayer in Egypt. If anyone want to do prayers, we can stop and wait for you. Anyone will go or it's not the prayer time in your country. Okay. It's not prayer time in our country. But if you want to take back, we can wait. Okay, we can all continue. What is the commonest cause of lower GI bleeding in adults? The commonest cause for lower GI bleeding in adults. What is the most common? It's anal fissure, hemorrhoids, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, cancer, rectal cancer. Diverticulosis. Diverticular disease is the commonest cause of lower GI bleeding in adults. Regarding the hemorrhoids and the anal fissure, I agree with you, but it will be related to defecation only. But effortless, not related to any 
action will be the diverticular disease is the most common lower GI bleeding in adults. Okay, sir. And let's face this scenario. It's asking about the same concept. And in the scenario, you can see that it's not related to any defecation. Right? And the abdomen is soft. There is no tenderness. And the digital rectal examination reveals dark blood, but no other finding. And this will be your key in the exam. He will give it exclusion for you, give you exclusion for any other differential diagnosis. And the colonic cancer is not common to come with profuse bleeding. That's why you do an investigation for it. What is it? Occult blood stool, right? Occult blood test, yes, sir. So if it's occult, occult means hidden. Why you search for a hidden blood if it will be presenting with a brophy's bleeding? It will be nonsense, right? Yes, sir. So that's a great. How about a black tarry stool in AF patient, eight or five prelation patient? Black tarry stool in eight or five prelation patient. What could you think of? And Mesenteric uh, infarction. Mesenteric infarction, that's why I'm searching for, that's a great mesenteric infarction. And in mesenteric infarction, he might not come with melina. He might come with just diarrhea. This is a very late sign. If he came to you with diarrhea, this bowel is ischemic. I will try to get you a picture of it. We are just brainstorming to get together. If anyone feeling any pressure, don't feel any pressure. You are great where you are studying. There is no pressure. Don't compare your paper one with someone who have been preparing for a year or else. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So let's continue and have another question, another happy question. What is the most common pleading per nipple? What is the commonest cause for pleading per nipple? Papilloma. Papilloma, that's a great. And the operation will be? Polydocrectomy. Microdocrectomy. Micro. Thank you, Dr. Nasrat. That's great. It will be micro, not the macro. How about the head field operation? Head field operation is the macrodocrectomy. What is used for? Ductectasia. Ductectasia, that's great. And ductectasia is the most, most common cause for? Adult women, I mean, aged women and with smokers. Smoking, and it will be creamy discharge in non lactating lady. Yes. Those information must be in your mind without thinking. Must be like, what is your name? My name is Pishoy. The commonest cause for bleeding per nebet is papilloma. The treatment will be a microdocotomy. The most common for creamy discharge in non-lactating lady will be lactectasia. The operation will be Hatfield operation. Okay. 
Okay. Yes. So let's have a hard question for those amazing surgeons. If we have a 55 year old man found to have an anal cancer, the staging investigation showed no metastatic disease. What is the most appropriate treatment? Hard question, hard question. Because the anal cancers are squamous epithelium of the anal can and arise from the inferior to the lindate line and strongly related to human papilloma virus, type 16. You have to do Medical chemo radiotherapy. You will do combined chemo radiotherapy. This is the standard treatment for the anal cancer. Yes, chemo radiotherapy is the standard treatment for the anal cancer. That's a great. Let's have another hard question for those hard surgeons. How would you investigate for a heavy GIT bleeding? Angiogram. Yes, angiogram. A heavy lower GIT bleeding should be investigated with angiogram. But can it be done in uh, emergency? No. So what would you do in emergency? Colonoscopy. Yes. You will have to do a proctoscopy. Clear? Yes, sir. So the indication for surgery is a patient above 60 year old or continuous bleeding despite endoscopic intervention or recurrent bleeding or known cardiovascular disease with poor response to hypotension, all of those are indication for surgery in the lower gastrointestinal bleeding, the profuse ones. But if you have the luxury, the best investigation would be arranging for CT angiogram to exclude angiodysplasia. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the diverticular disease of the colon will be managed mainly by surgical intervention? This is a question. No, 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 it's conservative, that's great. And when will you do a surgery for diverticular disease? Is the patient above 60? continuous bleeding despite endoscopic intervention or recurrent bleeding or known cardiovascular disease with poor response to hypertension. And of course, if there is a fistula or complication of the diverticular disease, if it's complicated, any complicated uh, situation will require surgical intervention. So let's have a happy question regarding the stomas. I know that you are very familiar and very good with the stomas, right? If you are good with stomas, raise your hands. Someone have answered before we post the question. Dr. Sahar, you are telepathic. but it's not C.
If you have an old lady with a large bowel obstruction and on examination, she has a rectal cancer six centimeters from the anal verge, which has occluded the colonic lumen and abdominal x-ray show a cecal diameter of seven centimeters. What is the management? What you do? Why low colostomy in this patient? Large bowel obstruction. Exactly. The sun must not rise upon any large bowel obstruction. You have to keep this in mind. So the fastest thing you can do for this patient is to do a decompression. And the fastest decompression will be done by a loop colostomy. Loop colostomy, where you have the two lumens, like this picture. This is the loop colostomy. You get it out and just cut the lumen and make it open book. This is the fastest thing you can do it. Whenever you need a defunctioning as fast as possible, the fastest thing you can do it. This is a loop colostomy. You have two eyes, but continuous. Clear? Yes, sir. A bowel obstruction due to obstruction of left-sided colon is usually treated by resection of the primary lesion and formation of colostomy. But in bowel obstruction due to a rectal cancer should be treated by loop colostomy because this patient must be defunctional and be prepared for the definitive surgery. The definite surgery must wait until the staging is complete. You have to know if this patient have any metastasis because thank God that the colonic cancer, the colonic cancer can be aimed for cure. You can cure this patient. And the loop ileostomy, we said before that the loop ileostomy is reserved for those who have done resection anastomosis at a defunctioning stage to be later on reversed. Clear? Yes, sir. Our meeting just have 10 minutes to end. The happy times pass very fast. I don't know it's happy for you or not. Anyway, we will have our 10 minutes. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes. So, we have an old lady investigated with colonoscopy for a change of a bowel habit. However, due to adhesion from previous hysterectomy, she experienced a pain and requests procedure to be terminated. The endoscopist feels that she reaches the splenic flexure. CT colonoscopy. CT colonoscopy. You have to respect the patient needs. A failed colonoscopy should be managed with CT colonoscopy. Thank God CT colonoscopy can be done nowadays because the colonoscopy itself with the endoscopic materials is very irritating, either the upper GI or the lower GI. So if the patient refuses, please respect your patient request as long as you have substitutes. Unless it's emergency, you have to do it after her permission, if she is aware. Okay? Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Let's have another question. about the colectomies, when you do a colectomy. Let's check your knowledge regarding this old gentleman who present with obstruction carcinoma of the splenic flexure. Yes, 
extend that right hand column to me. Extended right hand column to me. So who knows the difference between the standard right hemicolectomy and the extended right hemicolectomy? Standard right hemicolectomy will be uh, medial up to medial two third of transverse colon. But if we do it up to splenic laser, that is extended right hemicolectomy. So yes, the extended right hemicolectomy different from the standard right hemicolectomy that the extended right hemicolectomy will be involving the splenic flexure as well. But the standard right hemicolectomy will involve only the colonic division to the right of the middle colic vessel, while the extended right hemicolectomy will involve division of the middle colic vessels and as well the splenic flexure. And in this patient, this what we need. This question always causes confusion and the understand of this information require that you read it carefully the tumor is definitely as a splenic flexure and the second point is the operation is definitely extended right hemicolectomy you need this with you you will not benefit anything from the standard right hemicolectomy because you left the tumor where it is in the splenic flexure a left hemicolectomy or even older operation of the transverse colectomy could be considered if the patient wasn't obstructed, by the way, but in this patient, he is already obstructed. However, when obstruction is present, extended right hemicolectomy, which involves the idiocolic anastomosis as well, is relatively safe, even in the obstructive setting. Hope this made it clear. I know this question must have passed by you, but I want you to understand it. Can you understand it now or not? Yes, yes, clear. Extended right hemicolectomy. If a Crohn's disease patient came to you with acute appendicitis, what you do? A Crohn's disease patient came to you with acute appendicitis, or in real life, you will face a patient with right iliac fossa pain, and when you open, you find him a Crohn's disease patient. Came to you with inflamed appendix, and you find it intraoperatively inflamed appendix in a Crohn's disease patient. What you do? Yes, Dr. Barathormoon, yes, it's right hemicolectomy. The poor patient and the poor surgeon, he must tell their parents that he will do it. It's a hard situation, by the way. I have faced it myself. Okay. Let's have another question. Might be our last few questions. What is the earliest complications that can occur following construction of ileostomy? The earliest, not necrosis. the most common. Read care. Necrosis. Necrosis. So it's all about the trick in the question format. He is asking about the earliest, not the most common. What is the most common complication in construction? Dermatitis. Of dermatitis. So dermatitis is the most common but it's not the earliest. The earliest complication is necrosis. And of course, all of those complications can occur. Prolapse, retraction, stoma, hernia, all can occur. But dermatitis is the most common and the earliest would be necrosis. Clear? Yes. Yes. You are such a great surgeons. There's no hard questions I can find for you. How can we find a tough question for you? This might be a little bit tough. It will ask you about your knowledge and understanding as well. If you have a 20 year old man 
with diarrhea and passage of blood and mucus rectally. He has previously undergone ileocecal resection in a past for inflammatory bowel disorder. What is the oh, sorry, it's colitis. Why it's not Crohn's disease? Blood and mucus going more for us articulated. Mm. So this patient is ulcerative colitis, not Crohn's, right? Are you sure? I think so. Mm. Can you give yourself another thinking? A history of right-sided resection in an patient. What is the management for ulcerative colitis? Multiple resections. No, ulcerative colitis, the, the lesion will be from rectum to proximal in continuous pattern, not skip lesion. So he will not require multiple resections. Yes, yes. And not common to be involving the ileocecal junction, which has been resected yes. in this patient. So this patient is a Crohn's right, so... bronchitis. Yes. Right? Right. So read any question at ease and think and give it time. Don't rush. So this patient is a Crohn's patient. Yes, thank you, sir. It, it's explained by itself. It's not hard, but I have taunted you and said it's hard. That's why you take in your consideration it will be hard. No, it's not hard at all. You are such a great surgeons. So happy to have been with you and this meeting have been ending. Does anyone have any question? And your recommendations are much appreciated. You can write it on our Telegram group anyway until we meet again.